Well, our next spe uh, keynote speaker will explore the future of quantum computing. Here from a Toronto-based leader on a quest to make quantum computing accessible to all. Director of Product at Xanadu, Josh Isaac. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm super excited to be here to talk to you about something that feels very future-facing, but it's something that's happening actually right now, and we can all start to get involved in exploring quantum computing today, and we can do this in downtown Toronto as well. So let me get started to talk to you about the future of quantum computing and the future of quantum programming. So to begin with, uh, I'm from Xanadu. We're a full-stack quantum computing company here in downtown Toronto. So our mission is that we're building quantum computers that are useful and available to people everywhere. So we were founded in 2016, headquartered just down here uh, around Bain College, so right deep in the downtown of Toronto, and about 170 plus people now. So our, our main focus really is three things. We're building the quantum hardware. We're building that quantum computing, uh, the next generation of hardware that will allow us to explore algorithms and computational paradigms we haven't been able to yet. Um, at, so the way we're doing this is we're building integrated chip quantum photonic processes, and I'll talk a bit about that in a second. But this is only part of the story, and this is really something I want to talk about today. Building the hardware is only a bit of what some of the challenge in quantum computing is and lies ahead of us. We also need to do a lot of research and design the next generation of quantum algorithms that's going to take advantage of this hardware. But not only that, we need to make these quantum computers available to everyone. Once we've built them, it's not just a matter of they're there, we can use them, but we need to build up the tooling to make it so that anyone can access them, program them, and build the next algorithm that will take advantage of this hardware. So those are the three things we're doing at Xanadu. We're building the hardware, we're performing research and designing algorithms, and we're building the tooling around this entire ecosystem. So I want to touch a bit on the hardware that we're actually building at Xanadu, which is super, super exciting. So what we're doing at Xanadu is we're building quantum computers that are using light. So we're using lasers, we're using photons. We're taking advantage of the subatomic properties of these particles to allow us to do computations in the quantum realm. And this is really where the power of quantum computing comes from, that we're using these properties of nature to do computations that aren't easily accessible to us in classical technologies like CPUs and GPUs. So um, we've built, a, we already have a photonic quantum computer available on the cloud today, so available on our website, xanadu.ai. Uh, you can log in and you can submit things to execute on this eight qubit chip. Uh, so when I mention qubits, if you're not familiar with them, this is some, uh, th this is a representation of the power behind a quantum computer. What we're aiming for is more qubits. You can think of them somewhat analogously to bits, but they're harnessing the power of the quantum subatomic particles to do their computation. So we already have a photonic quantum computer on an integrated photonic chip available in the cloud. Um, and something that we achieved uh, earlier was we scaled this up. And this is really a big engineering problem. And uh, Last year, we put online the most powerful quantum computer on the cloud. So this is still using that photonic technology I was referring to, and this is now 216 qubits. Um, so this is a huge achievement. And what we really set out to do with this photonic uh, hardware is we wanted to showcase that you can now do computations today on quantum hardware over the cloud that is not possible to do classically. So we put out a nature paper alongside this uh, 216 qubit chip where we showed that to do the equivalent computation on classical hardware would take thousands and thousands times longer. Uh, something we could do in three minutes would take potentially 9,000, for example, on uh, classical supercomputing hardware. But what I mentioned earlier is it's more than just the hardware. The hardware is super important, yes. Without the hardware, we can't do quantum computing. But this is a tool-based revolution. You can think of similar tool-based revolutions in history. So one example is telescopes and astronomy. By building the tool, which were telescopes, we were able to infer things about the universe we weren't able to do without this tooling. 
X-ray crystallography and molecular chemistry and biology, another really good example of a tool-based revolution. So these are revolutions where they're driven by access to tools. And these tools can be the quantum hardware, but they can also be the software that helps us access the hardware, simulate what we want to explore, and unlock new algorithms for this next paradigm of quantum of computing, which is yeah, quantum computing. Um, so I want to segue into an uh, example here. Um, something you might not have thought about, but if I mention it now, you might realize that battery development doesn't seem to have moved much over the last couple of decades. And this is because battery development is really, really difficult. To simulate batteries requires to simulate subatomic particles that are moving through materials. So we're doing really, really complex computations that are very time intensive, very computationally intensive, just to move the needle on what we can do with batteries. This is a regime, actually, that's very suited for quantum computation. Quantum computation is using the properties of subatomic particles, and we can utilize that to simulate them in a way that we cannot do with classical computers efficiently. So this is just one example of where quantum computing has the potential to revolutionize our world. But I want to say we are not there yet. Yes, we are building the hardware, we're building the tooling, we're exploring the algorithms, we're building out and have a huge R&D effort, not just at Xanadu, but across universities and other companies. But there's still so much work ahead of us to explore not only what we can do once we have a million qubits in quantum hardware, but also how we program them, how we use them. So this is a really, really important question. We're not just building the hardware, we need to solve these other problems as well. How do we access it? What's the infrastructure? And what are the algorithms we're going to run when we have a million qubits? So as part of this work at Xanadu, I mentioned that we work on tooling. Uh, a big part of our efforts has been thinking about how we program quantum computers. How do we build up the ecosystem so that researchers in the field can explore algorithms that are possible to solve hard problems that we can't solve today? So to do this, we have a software library called PennyLane. And PennyLane is the leading Python library for differentiable programming and compilation of quantum computers. So what we're really aiming to do with PennyLane is build that flexible, rapid prototyping environment so that we can enable the R&D for the future of computing. Um, something I want to mention about PennyLane as well, um, we're really aiming as well to bridge the gap between what people are already doing with uh, computing and AI and machine learning and what's possible with quantum computing. So Penny Lane bridges that gap and it makes machine learning possible with quantum computers. Um, it's already becoming a big resource in the, in the quantum computing industry. So we built it about four years ago now. It's already been used in about 300 plus scientific papers. Our annual developer conference has 8,000 participants over the last three years and we have 40 plus university partners who are using Penny Lane to teach quantum programming. But this is challenging. It's really difficult to work out how do we solve today's problems with this next paradigm because it's, it's not an easy thing um, to do. You need to understand how you harness the power of quantum computing. So this is, this is important. We realize that it's not just about the tooling, but it's also about the content, the education, about teaching how quantum computing is different and how we harness that power. So um, in addition to building out the tooling, we've also been building out the content. So if you go to pennylane.ai, you're curious about quantum computing, you want to see what the challenges are, but also what people are thinking about in the field. We have a huge variety of tutorials, demonstrations, showcasing what we know and also what we don't know, what we want to explore in various fields like quantum chemistry, optimization, for example. Uh, quantum machine learning is another good one. Um, in addition to this, another important aspect is data. So we, if we want to do stuff with quantum computers, we need to load data in, we need to pull data out. As a field, this is something that we're all very uh, much thinking about. How do we pull together the data that we want to explore as a field, we want to benchmark, and we want to get a sense of what can we do better with quantum computers with this data? than classical computers. So we've also built out a data set service where you can download the latest data in quantum chemistry, in material science, and get started on quantum computing research today. Um, another thing I want to mention as well is that while the hardware might not be in a state where we can use it today, we can already explore quantum computing. So 
Xanadu, as well as other companies, other uh, university partnerships, have built out a wide variety of simulators that allows us to explore maybe not huge examples of a million qubits, but we can simulate 20, 30, 40 qubits on our laptops today. So we can start to build out um, these proof of concept early explorations now, where we don't have to wait for the hardware to be ready. There's also another point, which is um, we can, as we're exploring this now, we can get ready for what the future looks like when we have a million qubits. And I think this is super important and something we should all really be thinking about because we should be thinking about how quantum computing will disrupt our industry. Um, something I hope has come across in my presentation today is that quantum computing has the potential, but it will be time consuming and technically challenging to get there. That said, we can do something meaningful today. We can focus on what the potential is. We can think about that fault tolerant future where we have a million perfect qubits that we can run algorithms on. So this is sort of my call to action today. Start thinking about this now. What can we do with quantum computing that might disrupt your industry? Whether it's starting to explore potential applications across chemistry or material science, or whether it's even about building out that tooling, um, working with Penny Lane with Xanadu to explore what are the gaps in the tooling that we need to solve before we can start running things that are interesting application-wise. Uh, so one example I want to, or two examples I want to highlight today, uh, sort of answering this question with some of our partnerships at Xanadu. So at Xanadu, we are looking towards this fault-tolerant future, and we want to work with industry to identify what problems do people have, because I think that's an important aspect. We're doing the quantum computing research, but we want to understand the problems people have today that they're struggling to compute to work out how we can build that up and can we solve these problems. So two really good examples. We've been working with Rolls-Royce, uh, exploring how we can accelerate their research for aerospace engineering. Can we do this with Penny Lane? Can we do this with the simulator and the infrastructure tools that we've built out today? So we're exploring an a, um, algorithm called Quantum Singular Value Transform that has the potential to help with some of these computational intensive problems they're doing when they're looking at fluid dynamics with their aerospace engineering and their jet engine manufacture. So we're really taking a future look here. We're exploring, can we start identifying these problems? Can we build out prototype solutions? And can we get us ready for when the hardware is at that stage? Going back to the beginning of my talk, I also mentioned batteries. Uh, so we're working here with Volkswagen to explore, can we use the the power of quantum computing to make it easier to simulate batteries, and by making it easier to simulate batteries, can we jumpstart and move the needle even further in developing those next generation batteries needed in the automotive industry, especially as we see more and more electric cars around the world and electric car infrastructure. So working with uh, Volkswagen, we've already made a huge amount of progress exploring this. Um, it's can't be run on quantum hardware today, but it will be able to be run of the quantum hardware of the future. So uh, we've got some results showing using quantum computers for the material simulation of lithium ion batteries. Um, and while we can't simulate it, we can do resource estimation. We can identify how many resources we need, and that sort of sets us up for knowing what we need to build and how much we need to do to get to the point where we can simulate these batteries and um, start putting this into practice. Another big aspect is, can we reduce the amount of resources we need? So can we pull the timeline back and have something ready today that helps us identify not only when in the future we can do this, but pull that further to the present and aim to do that as soon as we can. Um, and out of this work with Volkswagen, we have now one joint patent and two scientific publications. So this is a big important thing with quantum computing. It's still relatively early and we want to share this knowledge. We want to help everyone understand what quantum computing is and what the potential is. Um, so thank you everyone. I encourage you to go to zanadu.ai and pennylane.ai to learn more about the quantum future and start exploring how it might disrupt your industry today.